He threw a leg across that iron horse and pulled the throttle down. A million things rushing through his mind like that rumbling sound. Living life in his own eyes, direction isn't clear. So searching, searching all these years. Welcome to Answers from Mars Hill. This is Pastor Ski from the Rushing Wind Biker Church out in uh, Holbrook, New York. And I want to welcome you to our show. And uh, we've been uh, talking about Christmas for the last several weeks. And uh, we still have a week and a half, so we'll continue talking about Christmas this week and next week. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, again, it's a crazy year. You know, it's a, it's a great time of year for, uh, for Christians. Um, but even with that, nowadays, with what's going on, it just seems like everybody is, uh, is tense. And what uh, normally is a very joyous time of year, it seems like for a lot of people, uh, they're having a, a hard time finding the joy of, of Christmas. Uh, even those of uh, the Christian faith who uh, believe in uh, you know, what this, uh, this day uh, was all about. And so, uh, you know, it's getting, getting cold out. Um, weather outside is frightful today. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's, it's just feeling more and more like, uh, like Christmas is coming. And, uh, you know, stuff going on in the world. Um, we still have no absolute closure on this uh, election thing. Finally, the vaccine has, uh, has been approved. So I think today, uh, well, Monday, was the uh, first time the vaccines were starting to give out. It was interesting. I had a, uh, uh, an email from a, a pastor locally that apparently in our county this uh, last Sunday, um, Suffolk County Police showed up at two churches to, uh, to see if they were uh, social distancing, wearing their masks. And, and so it's, uh, it's interesting that we uh, are kind of in a low-grade police state right now. And so uh, this is America 2020, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, a new world. But, uh, you know, I'm excited. Um, it's really been an extraordinary uh, time for our church, for uh, people of faith that really have a strong faith. And uh, we've been able to dig in, and it's, um, it's given us clarity. You know, we get, we get to look at ourselves and see if our faith is... Uh, where it should be, but also we get to see the state of Christendom in general. And uh, what I'm going to talk about today, I think last week I talked about Christmas being, um, um, uh, um, how did I view it? It's a day that the Father gave us a gift, and the gift of His Son. And very, uh, very intense, introspective conversation we had last week. And, you know, if, if, if you're of faith or if you're not, uh, I think uh, it'd be a nice show for you to go and and, um, and check out again because it makes you think of a different perspective. What would it be like for a father to give his son, um, knowing full well what the fate of that child was going to be? And so if you have a chance, go back to last week's show, um, check it out. I think uh, it may make you feel a little um, a little better about uh, about God in general, about what he did for us. But this week, I want to talk a little bit about um, Christmas songs. Um, you know, you turn on the radio, and it's like anything else. You, uh, you listen to, to all these songs, modern songs and uh, contemporary, and even some of the old-time songs. And, uh, you know, you got to dig hard sometimes to find um, a little bit of what Christmas is really all about, you know. I mean, baby, it's cold outside. Uh, I think that was a song that uh, uh, I think the uh, the Me Too movement or something created a big problem about the uh, the lyrics of that song. Um, but you know, you got songs like Santa Baby and and all these Christmas songs that are part of the normal mix of what you hear on radio this time of year. And for someone who really believes in what this uh, holiday is all about, um, really the the changing of of the human condition on the earth, uh, it's sad 
because uh, I mentioned last week, um, so many people celebrate Christmas and they have no idea what it is. They don't believe in what it is. It's just um, they want to have another day to, to celebrate. And I want to talk about one particular old-time Christmas carol uh, today. Um, I think most of us grew up with these Christmas carols, and, you know, they bring back memories. And uh, much, much better lyric, uh, you know, fluff and, uh, and uh, instrumentation uh, that really over, overpowers the story of what's going on. But the, uh, the song I want to talk about today, and uh, the reason I want to talk about it, the song, uh, Oh Holy Night, actually one of the most um, intensely spiritual Christmas carols that, uh, that we've ever sung. And uh, the words are very, uh, very deep in faith and, you know, a, a thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices, you know, yonder Yonder uh, breaks a new and glorious morn, fall on your knees. And, and all the lyrics to this song just really bring you to the, um, the epicenter of what Christmas is supposed to be. And so uh, you'd be uh, surprised to know that the person that wrote that song was not a Christian. Um, actually, someone who was more of a rebel rouser, hung out in bars, drank a little too much. And, uh, and he ended up writing one of the most intensely spiritual uh, Christmas carols, uh, almost a hymn. It's almost a song that I wouldn't call a Christmas carol. It's more kind of a, a hymn with the, uh, the intensity of uh, the faith that's really been interjected within this song. And uh, like I said, you'll be, be shocked to, to hear that this person actually, um, so far from faith, but wrote one of the most uh, intensely spiritual Christmas carols uh, that was ever uh, ever written. And so uh, I want to talk a little bit about the songs of the day. Uh, I want to bring a little information about this particular song, because what it's going to kind of teach us is um, when, when you open up the Bible, even if it's not for a reason to find faith, um, it's interesting how God speaks to people and how God re reveals things uh, through his word. Uh, so much so that someone can come to a, a deep place of understanding um, what something like Christmas uh, would actually be. And uh, the name of the guy that, uh, that actually wrote this song was a poet named, um, I have it here, Placide Coupeau, a French poet. And uh, he was asked by a, um, a local, pre local priest to write a song uh, about Christmas from the account of Christmas in the, uh, the Gospel of Luke, one of the most famous uh, accounts uh, with the angels and the shepherds. And uh, I think I mentioned on shows previously, it's the one that uh, Linus recites in a Charlie Brown Christmas. And so this, uh, this really secular uh, poet, uh, rabble rouser, uh, was asked by a priest to write a, a poem about uh, the account of the birth of, of Jesus Christ. When we come back from our first break, I want to uh, really unwrap that a little bit because there's also uh, one or two other uh, facts about this song that are very interesting historically. So when we come back uh, from a word from our sponsors, uh, we're going to talk about a holy night. We'll see you in a minute. Hey, everybody. This is Motorcycle Mike, the personal injury lawyer. I've been riding motorcycles my entire adult life. During the course of my 30-year career as a lawyer, I've also represented countless injured motorcyclists. If you are one of them, I can be of assistance to you. Go to my website, please, MotorcycleMikeESQ.com. I'll always be there for you. I'm on your side when you ride.
Welcome back to Answers to Mars Hill, Pastor Ski again, and we've been talking about Christmas carols, but one in particular, uh, O Holy Night, which before the break, I gave you a little bit of information uh, about that song, but I want to unwrap a little more, because it's a really intriguing, um, you know, uh, uh, story about how this song came about. As I mentioned, a, uh, a parish priest in, uh, in France asked a local poet uh, named Placide Capot to, uh, to write a poem about, uh, about Christmas from the account that's in Luke chapter 2 on the, the birth of Christ when the angels uh, came and, and said, uh, uh, peace on earth, goodwill towards men, glory to God in the highest. And uh, the shepherds, you know, got the first announcement that, uh, that the Christ had come. And, um, and this, uh, this poet, he actually reached out to a friend of his uh, to write music. Uh, a local composer named uh, Reginald Fessenden, who put it to, uh, to music. And, um, I don't know, Fessenden was a professor. It's a different part of the story. Anyway, so these two, uh, these two men wrote this song, and it became one of the most popular uh, hymns or Christmas carols. And it went through Christianity, through the churches, as just a great worship song. And um, eventually, the Catholic Church found out who wrote this and found out th these guys passed and tried to, uh, tried to get rid of the song. But it had become so popular that they couldn't stop the movement of, uh, of this song, O Holy Night. Um, and so, yeah, one of the most spiritual Christmas songs was actually written by two men uh, so far from God, uh, probably polar opposites of uh, direction, uh, direction from God. And, um, and then uh, the last piece of, of history of this song, uh, a professor, that's who Reginald Fessenden was. In, uh, in 1906, he made a, a generator and a transmitter in his garage. And on uh, Christmas Eve, 1906, he broadcast the first um, radio broadcast over the airwaves if that ever happened. And, uh, and what he did is he, uh, he read uh, the account from Luke, and O Holy Night was the first song ever, uh, ever played on the airwaves. And uh, again, just a piece of, of information. And, um, you know, this song has been uh, really uh, paramount in uh, the Christian message of, uh, of Christmas. Um, I imagine every denomination, every realm of Christianity has really uh, taken advantage of this song. And, uh, and just, I want to go through the words really quick because it's amazing that somebody who was really a drinker that hung out in bars and wasn't close to God at all would write a song that was so in tune with, uh, with what the, the meaning of Christmas was. And uh, so it goes, Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. Uh, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appears and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices. Yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, so hear the angel voices. O night divine, O night when Christ was born, O night, O holy night, O night divine. Um, again, an intensely spiritual song really grasp really the reason that uh, that Christmas uh, was. You know, it was uh, a time when the world was weary and um, it was dark and talks about, you know, it's a pretty intense Christian perspective of realizing that it was Jesus who gave us the, uh, the understanding of what our soul is worth. And so, you know, you have uh, Christmas carols, Christmas songs that are written. Really, you look at the underlying purpose of a lot of Christmas songs that are out, it's to, uh, to make Christmas about something else. And actually, you know, I believe there's spiritual war going on in this, this life we live. And so I believe there's uh, definitely a, a spiritual agenda to take our eyes off that, that child in a manger. And it's interesting that... Uh, 
someone who wrote a song like this would be someone not of God, but was spoken to by uh, by the scriptures. So I want to bring Bobby in and uh, talk about uh, Christmas carols. Maybe this song, maybe another song. I don't know, Bobby. How All you right. doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I have. Uh, let me just find it right here. I have the top ten Christmas songs about Jesus. I'm, so I, I'm shocked you found ten. Yeah. So that's. I know it's funny because there was a little more than ten. There was a few more than ten. Um, but really, 10 is, is like the most popular. But starting from number one, Joy to the World. Okay. What Child Is This? Mm -hmm. Oh, Holy Night. Right. The First Noel. Mm -hmm. Silent Night. Hawk the Herald Angels Sing. O Come, O Ye Faithful. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And one, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight. God rest ye merry gentlemen. Really? That's okay. Away in a manger. And then... Um, Oh, little town of Bethlehem, and we three kings. But that's pretty much, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's pretty much the gist of them, you know? Well, actually, you know, there's a song that's really a modern song. And actually, the, uh, the woman who leads our worship sang it last night in church, uh, Mary Did You Know? Oh, okay. And again, a very insightful, insightful song from the perspective of Mary. Yeah, not really, not really a Christmas Christmas song, um, but I do. It does, you know, it does fall in that lines. But when I hear that song, I really don't think of it as a Christmas really? song. Yeah, you know, I think it's a beautiful song and everything, but I just don't hear it as a Christmas song. You know. Okay. Um, but I also have the top ten Christmas songs overall. Right. And we'll see if anything on that top ten <laughs> list falls in there. Um, All I Want for Christmas is You, Mariah you Carey. Go. Yeah. Rocking Around the Christmas Tree. Yeah. It's the Most Wonderful Time of Year. Yeah. Last Christmas by Wham. Nice. Jingle Bell Rock. It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas. Uh, White Christmas, Bing Crosby, which right. I don't think that's really about just the season, right? There is a, that's not really a uh, Christmassy, Christmassy song. Um, it's nice. Yeah, it is a nice song. I think it's nice because it's it's done tasteful and it, and it's an old classic song. Yeah, um, yeah. Holly Jolly Christmas, Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Santa Tell Me, Happy Christmas, Blue Christmas, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, Sleigh Ride, Carol of the Bells, Santa Baby, uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Rain, The Silver Bells. That's the top twenty. Not one song about not Jesus. One, yeah, in, not in one. Yeah, not one top song. twenty Christmas songs. Christmas ever. songs have nothing to do with Christmas. No, that's they, pretty. They, they really don't. Pretty. Pretty crazy, but it tells you, you know, what, what I spoke about, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, that the world has taken this and taken Jesus out of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's just the movement of the world. You know, we, uh, I mean, you and me, we, we understand faith and we understand the spiritual war that's explained in the Bible and, you know, the ways of the world and the ways of darkness that battle really the, um, the awareness of God. Uh, the goodness of God, the very help of God, and how the world has taken, you know, Christmas, and, I mean, it's just all over the place, you know, and it's not just Christmas, I mean, you got Easter, you know, Easter egg hunts, and bunnies, and, and all this, you know, ridiculous stuff that um, the spiritual forces in this world are doing a good job. You know, you, you know what's funny is uh, speaking of Easter, I have a picture of Manhattan skyline in um, nineteen. I, I forget what what they what year it was. It was uh, definitely um, somewhere it, between the forties and fifties, or, or um, somewhere in that era. But they had like crosses, like they they lit the lights in the windows with crosses yeah. on all the. It's like a beautiful picture. Yeah. Um, but like, wow, you would never see that today. You would never see Oh no, see there'd be lawsuits all over the place. Yeah, like that yeah. was incredible. Yeah. But it, like I'm telling you, I'll show you the picture. It is so beautiful just to look and you see, I forget, I don't know if it was the Empire State Building, but yeah. I they, think it was, because I think I remember seeing pictures of that. Okay, yeah, and it, yeah. it's just like it was amazing. I was like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. And uh, we're just tells so- tells you how far, how so far, far we've, uh, exactly. we've come. And, uh, you know, you, uh, you see the state our country's in, it's been a, a slow, a slow uh, fade, I guess you'd, you'd call it, from uh, from any 
any uh, semblance of goodness. Mm. And I know there's people out there that, you know, uh, they might might be offended if I say that things that aren't of God are not good, but uh, really they're not. You know, there is nothing that's good that doesn't come from God. That doesn't mean that uh, there isn't God-inspired goodness that is in people that aren't, you know, on fire Christians or whatever you want to call them. Because we are uh, all created in the image and likeness of our Creator. And so there's certain things that are, you know, that are part of us. But these, uh, you know, these, these men that, that uh, investigated the scriptures to write this song, um, you know, we know that the Bible is, um, is, is not just a book. You open it with words. And the story of Christmas and the story of Jesus is not just, you know, you, you open up a book and you're reading a, a saga of a, a fictional or a non-fictional character. This, uh, this story, the words that it's written in, the, uh, the men who were inspired to write it, within that, that story and those very words on those pages is power. And to, uh, you know, to see how when someone picks the, the Bible up, that's why um, it's hard to get people to read the Bible. Because, um, believe it or not, and, and they, nobody would, well, there are people who would admit to it. They're afraid of it. They're afraid of that book. And that's what keeps most people away. Well, it is intimidating. I mean, it's, especially when you started from the beginning. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of, um, everybody has known somebody whose life has changed because they pick up the Bible and they found the truth. Mm. And so, uh, people don't want to pick that, that book up. And there's, uh, there's spiritual tension. And that's why that book is the most beat-up book. It's the most hated book, the most loved book, uh, the biggest-selling book, uh, the book that has affected more people than all the other books in humanity put together for the good. And, um, and people are uh, intimidated by it. And so, um, you know, you look at a guy like, uh, like Percy Coupeau, who is a poet, who is looking for something to inspire poetry, and uh, and even that you look at a poet. I mean, you're you know you're you're someone that's in the, uh, I guess, entertainment business, and um, you have musical you know talents and things. And people that are artistic tend to be uh, spiritual. I think you have to be, you know, in order to be able to to write poetry, to write music, and even to write the lyrics, sounds. You know, there's a spiritual thing that happens in these these things. And so it's, uh, it's not, uh, not shocking that a man that's a poet would be one to write a deep song about something he didn't believe in when he, he read the original story. And so uh, when we come back uh, from this break, we'll, uh, we'll continue on this, uh, this conversation on the, uh, the Christmas music of the day and, uh, and how even the story uh, looked into from a secular perspective can change a life. So we'll be back uh, in a minute uh, with Mars, answer from Mars Hill. Okay. Hi everyone, Pastor Ski here, and I want to thank you for watching our program. I want to um, just tell you about two so two resources that I have for you, We're, um, sources of encouragement. You know, I've lived a very challenging life, and God has allowed me to go through a lot of things, and I've written two books. The first one is called The, uh, the Fear of Life. This is kind of my life story of a very hard childhood, very dark childhood, dark family life, and how God redeemed my life from it, how he showed me life when I thought that life wasn't available. And, uh, and then I wrote this book called No Sting when I went through my battle with, uh, with terminal cancer and how God healed me, how he enlightened me, strengthened me, and made a big difference in my life. 
And, uh, and both of these very encouraging resources, uh, sources of inspiration. If you know people who are struggling, people who have hard lives or people that are struggling with cancer, they would be probably a good resource. And uh, if you would like to uh, purchase uh, one of these books, you can go to barnesandnoble.com, amazon.com, and the Zulon Press bookstore. And I appreciate your support. And get these out and help a lot of people. God bless you all. And uh, I'll see you down the road. Welcome back to Answers to Mars Hill, and we've been uh, talking about Christmas carols. And uh, as I mentioned earlier in the show, um, I really did a study on this song, uh, Oh Holy Night. I did actually a message series several years ago for Christmas about several Christmas carols. And, uh, you know, when you, when you listen to Christmas songs, for those who are, are believers and, uh, and those who are not people of faith, um, Listen to the lyrics of the songs. You know, they'll, um, they'll speak to you. You know, uh, I think last week, uh, no, the week before, we need Christmas in this, this time we're living in. You know, it just seems like everything has been stolen from us. Uh, goodness and hope and, uh, you know, a future. We have no idea what's going on. And so when you, uh, you know, for those who um, might not want to pick up the Bible to have... Uh, Maybe God give you a little bit of hope. Listen to some of these Christmas carols. And uh, not Santa Baby, uh, because that's just the material garbage of the world. You might as well listen to non-Christmas songs to get the same kind of, uh, I don't know, empty, empty messages. But when you, you, read, you listen to a song like Oh Holy Night, and um, I mean, most of us either were you know, far from God or not, and we were growing up. This is a song that uh, we sang in church, whether it was a Catholic church, I was raised Catholic. It's uh, a song that has really touched all of uh, Christianity. And I say a majority of the people out there have been, were raised at least in an era where church was kind of part of family life. And, uh, and we get the understanding of, okay, oh, holy night, we understand the story. But when you, uh, when you look at the words that this man put together, um, allow it to speak to you. You know, there's, there's uh, sometimes psalms in the Bible that, you know, even people that aren't Christian, they like to read them, they soothe the soul, um, because there is something in there. But when we, uh, we look at the song, O Holy Night, um, I think it gives us a lot of encouragement. Um, you know, I mentioned the two lines, which I'm going to share uh, the word for the week on, uh, Thrill of Hope. Uh, the weary world is rejoicing, and we need uh, we need something to have joy in nowadays, because if nothing else, we're weary. I mean, weary, tired, beat up. Um, it just seems like there's nothing out there. And uh, it says, "Yonder breaks a new and glorious morn," and that's uh, an encouragement. That as dark as today is, uh, tomorrow the sun's still going to come up, and it's still going to be. Uh, goodness to be found, you know, somewhere. And and just reading on and on the um, the words of this song, it says, In all our trials, he was born to be our friend. He knows our need to our, uh, to our weaknesses. He's not a stranger. Because uh, this child who was born on Christmas would experience all the, the hard things that we, um, we experience in life. And then it talks about really the message that Jesus came. Whether you think he's just a good philosopher, nice teacher, um, someone who had uh, some nice truths to live by. It says his law is love and his gospel is peace. Again, peace is hard to come by. It says change shall he break and uh, oppression will cease. Hymns of joy. I mean, it's a, it's a very encouraging, um, really, poetry. And whether you are a Christian or not, these words, uh, I believe, will, will help you get through this time. And, uh, and who knows? You know, uh, God may just uh, touch you because that's what this is, uh, this is all about. And uh, for those of us who are raised in the church, and I think, I'm going to go out and say the vast majority of, of the people that, that even listen to this show 
people in my motorcycle community, people I, I know, most of us were raised in a church. And, uh, you know, we kind of had an idea what Christmas was. And, you know, we sang these songs in churches. And, you know, we had a nativity scene. And uh, maybe uh, we were kids that play acted these, uh, these scenes. And maybe uh, your kids maybe have acted out these scenes. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a reason why Christmas has lost its, um, its perspective. It's because there are forces in this world that wants to rob you of the life that you can have. And so it's all about materialism. You know, you've got songs like Santa Baby and all of a sudden there's sexual innuendos and uh, office parties and uh, good cheer, you know, holiday cheer and drinking. And it, it just has taken the goodness out of something that was just meant to be good. Um, you know, this song, Oh Holy Night, you know, we think of, um, of this word holy. And, um, you know, we, we kind of uh, have this impression as this overbearing religious word because we only really hear it in, uh, in church. And so, uh, you know, it just, it just brings you to a place sometimes, okay, I know where the conversation's going. But the word holy, really all it means is, is set apart, to be different, to be set apart for the goodness that God wants for us. So that's all holy means, you know. And this night was a night that was set apart from every other night in the, in the history of humanity. That uh, that goodness could be uh, could be accentuated. That goodness can be uh, introduced or reintroduced back into the world, because when God created the world, He said everything was good, and then we we screwed the whole deal up, you know. But this word holy. Is, uh, is really something to kind of bring us to a depth of the pinnacle of what Jesus came to give us. And it was uh, peace, a way to find peace, um, a way to uh, have joy. You know, you read about the story and all through the, the Bible and what Jesus promoted and what he uh, wanted to give us was uh, hope, and joy, and peace. And so all those qualities are really what um, a life that God would want you to have. You know, it's, it's not about being in church and doing religious things. You know, God created us to have peace, to uh, have hope, to live in joy all the time to not have anger and anxiety and stress. And, and that's what a holy life is. Um, it's not wearing robes on your knees in church all the time. You know, in, uh, in the book of Ephesians, Paul talks about what holiness is. And it's just doing the things that are, are good and thinking the things that are good. And... Um, and being a person that is full of goodness to your friends and your, your family and, uh, and even to yourself. And so when we, we see what Jesus came to bring us on this, this holy night, you know, um, we're in a weary world. You know, we need hope. This night that we, uh, we remember, uh, unpack it, get rid of all the I don't know, top 50 songs that have nothing to do with what Christmas is all about. And uh, listen to a couple of key songs. Just let them speak to you, you know. And, and I'm not preaching at you. I'm just trying to, to help you tap into something in a time that's really dark. Um, we, need, we need Christmas. Uh, probably more than Christmas. But Christmas is the start. Of, uh, of what can be good. You know, when, uh, when the angels came that, that night and said, uh, Hosanna in the highest, uh, peace on earth, 
and goodwill towards men. It was the reintroduction of, uh, of peace. You know, and it was uh, the story that inspired the very line, um, yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. The day after Jesus was born, everything had changed. Uh, because of that night and what occurred uh, the next morning, it was a new and glorious morn. And, uh, you know, God wants us all to have uh, hope. That's what Jesus came to give us. He wants us all to have peace. And as we look at this season, and, uh, you know, if you're watching and you feel like turning the show off now, go back to the life that uh, that you got. Just know that what outside your window today is probably not going to get much better. But uh, we can go through it really having hope, having joy, and actually living a good life, experiencing a good life. You know, uh, the last nine months, ten months, uh, the pandemic months, have been uh, probably one of the most fulfilling, um, important seasons of my life because I, uh, I have hope, because I have peace, because what Christmas came to give us um, lives in me. And I have so many friends. I see people all the time, you know, out, in the, out and about with people that I minister to and the community I do life with and hang around with. And, um, you know, you hear there's anger, you know, there's, uh, there's attitudes that really have a, an underlying fear, though most people don't want to let on that there's fear about tomorrow. But uh, the biggest, meanest of us go through those thoughts, too. And so, um, you know, as you uh, turn on your radio and you hear some of these songs, when uh, one of the old-time classics come on, whether it's Emmanuel, um, away in a manger, O Holy Night, Joy to the World. Listen to the words and try to get some hope in what Christmas is really all about. And uh, after I come back from uh, the next uh, next couple of uh, sponsors, uh, I'm going to share the word for the week. And it's going to be really into the depth of this song, O Holy Night, and how it speaks to us about hope, uh, about joy, about Christmas. So uh, when we come back from a word from our sponsors, the word for the week. The word for the week is uh, Holy Night from a non non-believer's perspective. And so we'll be back in a minute with answers from Mars Hill. Hey everybody, this is Motorcycle Mike, the personal injury lawyer. In addition to representing injured motorcyclists for over 30 years now, during that same time, I've represented countless car crash victims and construction workers injured on construction sites. If you need my assistance, go to my website, MotorcycleMikeESQ.com. I will always be there for you. Welcome back to Answers from Mars Hill. This is the word for the week. And uh, tonight, uh, I'm going to be talking about this song, O Holy Night. And uh, amazing that a uh, person who is so far from God actually wrote this song. So I mentioned uh, earlier on the show that it was this, uh, this poet, French poet, that actually wrote the song. And then it was the first song ever played on the airwaves. 
on radio waves in 1906. Uh, this man, uh, Canadian professor Reginald uh, Fessenden, picked up his violin, played the song, read from uh, Luke chapter 2, the account of uh, the birth of Christ. And so uh, this song really brings us to that moment. And, uh, you know, think about this scene of a, a babe in a manger. You know, uh, the song kind of reminds us of, uh, of what that really was. See, most likely that manger was carved in the side of a, of a cave. And it was, uh, you know, a place where animals would go in to, um, to stay out of the, uh, the elements. And so it wasn't exactly the most sterile of environments. Very dirty, uh, as a matter, matter of fact, and filthy as far as uh, what we would even think about uh, having a baby or any kind of procedure, procedures or anything like that in today's day and age. So, you know, we look at the environment itself and the, the scene was very raw and very um, earthly for a king, uh, nevertheless, the, uh, the son of God to... Uh, to appear and be born. And uh, these were very young people. You know, Mary was probably somewhere around 14, 15 years old. And, uh, Joseph, possibly young 20s, mid 20s. And, uh, and sometimes we, we get these religious pictures of these scenes of the Bible and it, it's uh, kind of cleaned up and it's made sterile and, and uh, and we lose the very aspect of one of the important things about the way God came was he came into uh, our culture as one of us, to be one of us. And it wasn't in a king's castle, it was the commonality of, of humanity. And he got down and dirty and the darkness and the, the depravity and the, the dark places of our, our humanity and the human way of living to uh to be with us and this song uh has uh, several powerful phrases within it but i want to concentrate on two of them because uh two lines in particular resonate in uh, in every era you know we're in a, i'm in a dark time right now and uh you know we need help uh, we're tired you know uh, i mean just in America in particular, going through the last four years of conflict and, and, and chaos and everything we've had to go through, listen to, and uh, there hasn't been any semblance of peace. And then the last uh, nine months with this pandemic, um, you're probably feeling worn out. Uh, life has worn out all of us, particularly this last nine months. And so as we, uh, as we focus on Christmas and what it, uh, what it really means, you know, the, uh, the faith aspect, which is the only aspect of this, uh, this holiday that the world has railroaded, stolen, made it about uh, many other things. You know, this, uh, this song that this poet wrote, and you think of the lyrics, a weary world rejoices because there's a thrill of hope. And no matter where you are today, you know, this, uh, this world is hopeless. And uh, Jesus came, and when he came on that, that morning, or that evening, as a, a child in a manger, um, it was a second chance. It was hope that maybe this uh, selfish, dark, evil, violent humanity might have a chance to turn around and uh, redeem itself. And so we rejoice because somebody came to help. They spoke about this last week, you know. And then that night, the child in the manger, and then when the sun came up the next day, uh, everything had changed. Uh, it went from generations and decades and centuries of hopelessness. And uh, you know, when Israel, God was involved, but then they walk away and 
and then he was a little more involved, but never to the extent that he was when Jesus came to show us a better way. You know, they'd been waiting for generations for this moment, and they missed it. You know, uh, and we look at how we go through life, you know, we kind of hoping one day things will get better. Somebody, someone will come and give us hope, a new chance, a new system, a new something. You know, we look at uh, elections, you know, uh, we're hoping for a change, something new, somebody to, to come in and help. You know, it's kind of interesting. We, uh, we have these elections every so many years and it's like uh, we're looking for a, a savior, someone to save our society, our culture, our, uh, our humanity, our, our economics, and everything else. You know, and we're always looking for someone or something. Because we all have this feeling that life should be better. There's got to be something better out there. There's, there's got to be a place where things are more peaceful, more loving, more compassionate. You know, those who don't have, you know, just dreams, daydreams of maybe having something, more, enough. And so this, this hopelessness that humanity has gone through. Uh, this day that God sent his son was to give us hope at a lot of different levels. Take away the weariness. Because it's one thing to have a hard life, but then when there's no hope, the hard life just bears on you more and more and more. And so when hope comes, what is the natural reaction? Um, we rejoice. Um, we're happy. You know. There's, there's, there's possibilities. And that's what Christmas is all about. That's what God came and sent his son to, uh, to give us hope that things could be better. You know, um, the world now, the weariness is, is just getting worse and worse. And without God, without this faith that I'm a part of, a lot of people are part of. Um, we're just going to get more weary. Just going to get wearier as the times get harder and humanity gets darker and uh, anger gets angrier. Hate gets more hateful and violence reaches things that we uh, we may have never seen. You know what we're going through now in the world is nothing new. It's just new today. You know, there's been nations and systems that have been good for a while and then broke down and the world always goes the way that it always goes. And uh, we're in a time where we're waiting for something better. And uh, there is. That's what Christmas is here to give us. You know, um, David, had very powerful things to say in the Psalms about God's loving kindness. Um, Jeremiah, in, uh, in a lot of his writings, particularly Lamentations, uh, he was writing about a time when Israel was kind of in a state like we're in now, just chaos and darkness and no goodness. And then he changes in the middle because God reminds him that there's hope. And... Um, in Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 20 to 24, Jeremiah shifts from just talking about how dark and how dreary and weary the world is. And then he changes, he says, the Lord is my portion. I recall this in my mind, and, and then I have hope. You know, my soul says, have hope. Because uh, the Lord is good to those who wait on him. Uh, the person who seeks him. And it's good that he waits silently for the salvation that the Lord's going to bring. And so there's a hope we can rest in, a hope we can sit in. And uh, it came on Christmas. That child in a manger 
came to bring us peace. Oh, not peace in the world, that's going to happen one day, but it's a different time, a different story. But peace up here, peace in here, that no matter what's out there, what's around you, what people are saying, what people are doing, what's going on in your life, that in your soul you can have peace, knowing that God's, uh, God's doing something. And in the ultimate, it's good. And even though things are not good right now, um, we know that God is a good God. Uh, sent his son. You know, what kind of love is that? That a father would send his son. And so this Christmas, understand that in this weary world, it's time to rejoice. Look to our hope. Because... Uh, Yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. The day you step into this understanding of God, of Jesus, of Christmas, the purpose of a, a babe in a manger, um, tomorrow is going to be different. And the next day is going to be better. And your soul will well up in peace. And you'll have a hope for a better tomorrow, a better future. For us, our children, our grandchildren. And so that's the, uh, the word for the week. Um, be encouraged this Christmas. Everything out there is discouraging. And it's going to try to just suck the life out of you. And Jesus came to give us life. Life more abundant. So that's the word for the week. This Pastor Ski from the Russian Wind Biker Church. I want to thank you for tuning in. I want to thank uh, Motorcycle Mike and Kenny Wolfram and Max. And uh, Bobby, Strong Island TV, um, for supporting me, for, uh, for having me on the show. And uh, if you're ever in Holbrook, uh, New York, come on down to the church. Check out a small, uh, exciting little group of people that are uh, holding on to hope, having a lot of joy, and not feeling as weary as, uh, as much of the world. So this is Pastor Ski. I'll see you next week on Answers from Mars Hill.